Yes? No? No. Okay, they're going to stay they're going to stay in and get the word today. Okay, now we're here. We're at the point of what we came for, a word from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this sister needs no introduction. Uh, sister Smith, have you ever been in any of her Sunday school classes and the way she preaches and teaches the uncompromised gospel, you know that she's going to give us a word today. Amen? Amen. So what I'm going to do is just get out of the way. Amen? Amen? So the next voice you hear will be Sister Smith. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Giving praise and honor to God this morning is good to be in the house of the Lord. And yes, the blood still works. Thank God that the blood still works. If you would this morning, you know when pastor is out, we always work on making up for that promise that he, he makes every Sunday when he gets up that he's going to let us out early. So if you would just give me 20, 25, 30 minutes of your time this morning. We're still going to work towards that goal of getting you out early on this morning. If you will stand this morning for the reading of God's word and turn to the book of James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'll be reading verse 2. 3 and 12. When you find it, say amen. amen. If you need me for me to wait, say hold on just one more second. Okay, I heard somebody say hold on one more second. Okay. James chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 reads, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And then verse 12 said, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. You may be seated. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you this morning just thanking you, Lord, for all blessings. Thank you, O oh God, that you are a God that sits on high and looks down low. Thank you, O oh God, that you are a God who has all power in his hand. And now, Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring to my remembrance, O oh God, the things that you have given me for your people on today. I pray, O oh God, that as I decrease, O oh God, that you would increase. That even though you are using my voice, O oh God, that the people will not focus on me, but they will focus on you, O oh God, in the word that you have for them on today. Lord, make our ears sensitive, O oh God, to your word. Allow me to hear, allow your people to hear, O oh God, and allow us to hear it a way, O oh God, that it will empower our lives, O oh God, and make us stronger today than we were on yesterday. Oh, Lord, it's in your son Jesus' name I pray and ask it all. I'd like to use for a topic this morning, trust me no matter what. Amen. Trust me no matter what. If I were to ask the question, what is your meaning of strong faith? I'm sure that I would get a lot of different responses from different people. Some people would be smart enough to look up the two words and say, uh, it means a powerful belief. And then some would just go off of what they've heard from other people and say, I've heard some people who was going through some things say that, you know, I know it was going to work out because I had the faith. I've, I've heard some people say when somebody else was going through, when they didn't have nothing else to say, they just told them, just keep the faith. And then I've heard some people who, or I've saw some people who nothing seems to faze them. I don't care what they go through. They always got this po positive attitude. It's always going to work out. And I ask them, how is it that you can be that way about the things that happen to you? And they say, it's because I have faith. 
Now, when you look at the book of James, James, who was the half-brother of Jesus, James believed that if you had faith, that it should show in your everyday life. J James believed that if you, who you say you are, it ought to show up in how you live. Now, if you were to ask me, what, what's my definition of faith? And I've been asked that before, and my response is always more than just a belief. I always say a confident belief. A belief without a shadow of a doubt in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. A belief, a 100% belief, in, and that's the only thing that I can give a confident belief in because people can't be believed 100% of the time. Why? Because we're not perfect. Things in the world, you can't have 100% belief in the things that are in the world. Why? Because things in the world are temporary. And so even in saying that, I, I think you could get a good idea of what faith is. But I, I was talking to God and I'm like, Lord, I need an analogy. I need a metaphor. I need something so that they can get it. And I was reminded of a story that I read one time. And it was about a guy by the name of Tightrope. And he got this name because he could walk a tightrope from one side to the other. And it said that he had gotten so good at walking this tightrope that he would put on a blindfold. And so this, this guy by the name of Tightrope, he lived in Paris, France. And this promoter in America, he heard about tightrope. And he sent him a letter and he said, I don't know if you can, but I would like for you to walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. He said, I'll pay you a large sum of money for doing this for me. Tightrope looked at the invitation and he said, I've never been to America and I would like to go. So he accepted the invitation and he came over to America and, and the story goes on that when he got over here, he went over to the Canadian border and he got on the tightrope, he put on his blindfold and he did something different this time. He put a wheelbarrow in his hand. And it said he came across the tightrope from the Canadian border over into America and it said the people just went wild. And so when he got off the tightrope, he went to the promoter. He said, did you think that I could do it? The promoter said, yes, I just saw you do it. He said, no, no, no. He said, did you really believe that I could do it? The promoter said, yeah, I believe that you can do it. He said, well, I'm going to go back across. He said, but this time, I want you to get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> The word belief means to live by. And you know, when you listen to the story about tightrope, it makes us ask ourselves the question, how many times when we're going through things and Christ asks us, do we really believe him? We say that we do until he asks us to get in the wheelbarrow. In James uh, chapter 1 verse 2, he said that we will face divers temptations. That word divers means various temptations. And you know, when I see that, I thought about the time when, you know, when we're trying to encourage new believers to accept Jesus Christ as their, perfect, as their Savior. We always paint this perfect picture of how good things are with God. We, we, t we tell them, you know, because most of the time people, they accept Jesus Christ when they're going through something. And, and we appeal to their sensitive side and, and we tell them, you know what, God has no respect of person. That he loves you just like he loves anyone else. And that's true and we should. We tell them that Jesus Christ died for their sins and that, you know, he didn't just die for the people that you see sitting in church, but he died for all of our sins. And we tell them that, and that's the truth, and we should. We tell them that if they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, 
We go to Philippians 4 and 13 and we try to empower them by letting them know that they can do all things through Christ which strengthens them. And then we tell them about the miracles of God, how he healed the sick, how he raised the dead, and how he cast out evil spirits. We tell them all these things about God, all these good things. But what we forget to tell them, you know, in a perfect, in, in a perfect situation, that would be enough if after you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, if then you went on to be in, glo to be in glory. But between the time that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and the time that you leave this world, there is a gap in there that's called life. And in doing that gap that's called, called life, James tells us that we're going to face some diverse temptations. In this world that we live in, we're going to have to endure the test of life. If you keep on living, some things are just going to happen. If you keep on living and you live long enough, you're going to see some sickness and some disease. If you keep on living, you're going to hear about some companies that are, that are closing without much notice. If you keep on living, you're going to have to work with the saved and the unsaved. If you keep on living, you're going to lose some family members to death. If you keep on living, some friends are going to stab you in the back. And sometimes you may be the one that's doing the stabbing. If you keep on living, there's going to be some betrayal. There's going to be some lies. If you keep on living, people are still going to be in need because the Bible says that the poor will always be amongst us. This world is full of ups and downs. This world is full of trials and temptations. But James tells us, he said, don't panic. He said, there is a way to respond to these diverse temptations. He said, you got to respond and count it as all joy. And I think in the New Living Translation, it says, consider it an opportunity for great joy. In other words, is it going to feel good? No, he's not saying that it's going to feel good. But he's saying because you got your faith in, in God. That because of the joy that's within you, even though joy try to make itself look like happiness, it's not the same because happiness is conditional. Happiness, you're happy as long as things are going good. But joy, even when things are not good, you can still have joy within your soul. When, when things begin to happen, Instead of asking God why, you grow when you depend on your faith. You grow to a point to where your faith will encourage you because you will know that God is in control of all things. When things begin to happen, your faith will able, enable you to believe that God can call those things that be not as though they were. When you begin to go through things, it, it, the faith will help to keep your mind regulated on the right thing. Faith will decrease your stress level, lower your blood pressure, and empower you to be an example to others. Yeah. When you depend on your faith, you have something that the world don't understand. When you depend on your faith, you can see things that other people can't see. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Even though you haven't seen it, you believe that it's already going to happen because of the belief that you have in Jesus Christ. And then some people may say, why is it that we have to get that deep? Why is it that we have to have faith? And I say, why not? Why, why have access to a God who has all power? Why have access to a God who can do all things? And you sit here in this world and go through trial and tribulation and just deal with it. 
as, as I was looking at that, I, I thought about the things sometimes how, you know, we're talking about uh, having access to God. I thought about how, you know, you go to a, a, a restaurant, and I, I thought about the Sonic. You know, people like the Sonic drinks. But, but at, at Sonic, you can't get a refill. And so a lot of times we try to go during happy hour so we can get the biggest drink that we can get because we know that drink is going to be good. And then even when that drink is gone, we find ourselves still drawing on the straw making that slurping sound, trying to get everything good that we can get out of that drink because it's a good drink. It's the same way with God. Well, you know that God has everything that you need. Why wouldn't you do all that you can do to try to access all the power that he has and apply it to your life? If you are a person who can run, what is the purpose of signing up for the race if you have no desire to win? If you are a person that's hungry, what's the pur purpose of going out to dinner and you don't want to eat? Young ladies on the basketball team, you can play basketball. What's the purpose of trying out if you don't want to start? What what's the purpose? We should give it all that we have. So what am I saying? I'm saying simply this. What's the purpose in coming to church? What's the purpose in studying the word of God? What's the purpose of working in the church if you're not going to be committed to, them, to him and get everything that you can get from him? Why is it that sometimes we are comfortable living a defeated life and we don't have to? Why is it that we accept the bad things that are happening in our lives and the only memory verse that we have is all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? God said, there are some other things that I want you to know. He said, I want you to know James 1 and 3, and it says to know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. In other words, God is saying, you know what? You get the faith thing down, and then it's growing. It's going to grow you in other areas. It's a bypro some byproducts to having this faith. You get this faith, and then there's some other things that's going to go with it. He says in Romans in 28 and 28, I want you to know that all things work together for good for those who are the call according to his purpose. He said there are some other things that I want you to know to encourage you other than all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so I, I was, God was dealing with me on this and I thought about last week in our women's ministry. We were studying about the women in the Bible. And one of the women that we talked about was Jockey Bed. Now, when I say that, most people is like, well, who is that? I ain't never heard of her. <laughs> yes, you have. But then if I were to say the mother of Moses, then you would know who I'm talking about. So we was talking about the, 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 the lady that was talking to her was up talking, and it just, it just started stirring in my spirit when I thought about the, the, the process that she had been through and the faith that she has, she has shown. Jochebed was in a situation where she was in slavery. And then Pharaoh issues an order that all boy babies are to be killed. She have her son, Moses, and the Bible says she hid him for three months. And you know after three months, it's hard to hide a baby because now they're beginning to move around, cry more, they're not sleeping, and, 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 and a baby is one of the most precious things that a mother can have. She hid her baby for three months, but at the, at the end of three months, she couldn't hide him anymore. So the Bible says she made a basket, and she made this basket that was able to float. And she put the basket out in the river, and she allowed the, the, the baby to just float off. Amen. And it says in the story that when this happened, that Pharaoh's daughter found the baby. And when she found the baby, Miriam, who was Moses' sister, just happened to be there. And said, because she hadn't had the baby, so there was no way she could nurse the baby. Right. I know someone who can do it for you. 
So she goes and she gets Moses' mother to be his nanny. And when I was studying this and God was giving me this, I saw the perfect example of faith. I saw a woman who took the most precious thing that she had. And when she had done all that she could do with it, it signified that she put it in the river, which shows that she placed it in the hands of God. And because she placed it in the hands of God, God turned around and put it right back in her hand. So what you're saying this morning, I'm saying that the story about tightrope was good. But the story about the woman in the Bible is even better because we see where sometimes where Satan can mean things for bad, but God will turn around and may make it for your good. We see where she had done all that she could do and she turned it over to Jesus. In other words, she said, I'm going to get in the wheelbarrow. All right. She got, turned it over to Jesus and God turned right around and gave her her baby back. A lot of times we never get to see the full process because we're not willing to get in the wheelbarrow. Right. A lot of times we don't know the power that we have access to. A lot of times we just don't realize the power that God has because we're not willing to get in the wheelbarrow. God can do all things. God has all power. God can control all things. When I look around in our congrega congregation today, I see a lot of young people. And young people, you all are at a point in your lives where you're making so many decisions. You're, you're, try you're coming out from under the wings of your parents. You're deciding who your circle of friends are going to be because that, that's an important thing because you can't just have anybody around you because everybody can't handle your story. You, 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 you're deciding what circle of friends you're going to have. You're deciding where your career path, what, what you want to do in life. But sometimes we fail to consult God first. So I'm encouraging you this morning to have faith enough to consult God about what direction he wants you to go in. But I'm also, I, I, I want to let you know that some diverse temptations are going to come. That there are some things that you may have a plan in process. And Tony, I'm almost finished. There are some things that you may have, you may have a plan in process. But there may be, a, there may be some situations that come up that seem to block the plan that you have. You may have a plan to go to college, but for some reason your grant get canceled or you can't qualify for a loan. Things come up, things come up. Or you, you lose a loved one in the family and you can't go to the school that you thought you were gonna be, wanna go to. Or mom or dad lose their job and that, that uh, has a bearing on where you can go to school. A lot of things began to happen. We have a lot of young couples in here. All right. Husband and wives having children. Now decisions have to be made that, that takes into account more than just you. Yeah. Now it's no longer all about you. You got to consider that wife. You got to consider those children. And sometimes that causes a conflict because we're so caught up in ourselves. And so we're going to have to learn as Christians how to depend on God. We're going to have to have just enough faith to get in that wheelbarrow so that God can do like he did for Jochebed and just work things out for us. But if you never trust God, if you never get in that wheelbarrow, if you never allow God to show you what you can do, then you're missing out on life. That God has a plan for each and every one of us. And sometimes when you're going through those diverse temptations, it's hard to believe that this is a plan of God. But when you go on to read James, he said those, that faith is to grow your patience. In other words, God is going to get you to a point in that faith where you'll be able to relax. Where you'll be able to enjoy the joy 
that he's placed within you, that you will be able to have confidence and courage in him, knowing that God is in control of everything. So as I take my seat this morning, what is it? that I want you to take away from the sermon this morning. I want you to remember the, 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 the analogy about tightrope. All right. I want you to remember the story about jockey bed. Yeah. But most of all, I want you to remember what God is saying to you this morning. God is saying to you, trust me no matter what. Awesome job, I told y'all. Man, if I knew how to do one of them dances them kids be doing now, I'd do it right now. Because it's, it's amazing how God works out things. And uh, if you, the 8 o'clock people that came back, they heard some of the same things this morning that we just heard. And, you know, we, we didn't discuss our sermons, but that's how God works it out. That's how God does things. Amen? Amen. That was really good. Awesome, awesome message, awesome word. It's a word that you can use. Amen? Amen. Uh, at this time, we want to we wanna give you the invitation to discipleship. We want to open the doors of the church. Amen? Someone might want to, uh, because of the message they heard, or because of something in their life, just because they want to give, stop running and give Jesus their life. Give him, give him your body to use. Amen? Give him your heart to serve. Amen? Someone might want to come just running, what must I do to be saved? Someone might not know. They just might want to, want to get a special, special teaching, special encouragement today. Amen? Someone might today want to join this great church in the pastor's absence. Amen? The PNG, join the PNG family. Amen? Or someone today just might want to come up for prayer today. Amen? Because what better place to come for prayer than in the, in the house where the saints dwell. Amen? The people, the believers, the people who believe and have faith, like that tightrope kind of faith. That, what's her name? Joker? Jockey band kind of faith. I can't even say it. Amen. Somebody today might want to get in the wheelbarrow. Amen. Somebody today might want to trust God with the desires of their heart and put the desires of their heart in a basket and float it down the river. Because if you give it to God, I guarantee you he'll give it back.